1992, Alien 3 was released. Now, this is a movie that had gone through a really crazy, hectic production. From Vincent Ward's Wooden Planet to David to his action oriented script, which later he salvaged and turned into Pitch Black, this movie had changed hands a hell of a lot and just it it was a mess from beginning to end i'm going to gloss over the major issues and problems with it but if you are interested uh wreck and rage which is on the alien quadrilogy box set is a fantastic documentary and well worth the look but as i said i'm going to gloss over and tell you what i think were good aspects and bad aspects of the uh movie now the first thing going against this movie was to release the trailer before the film started um, production even. Um, it was a, a quick trailer, kind of very like the first Alien movie. And it suggested, uh, on Earth, everyone will hear you scream. So the idea was that they were going to probably set Alien 3 on Earth. This didn't transpire, but the fact was they had shot themselves in the foot by releasing this trailer. Now, the, the the main issue is that you had so many scripts, so many so many fingers in the pie, so many cooks, that things got shifted around, things got changed, and parts from different scripts were cannibalized. You had so many different elements put into scripts that by the end it was lucky there was even semi a coherent story. Uh, Originally, Vincent Ward wanted to do a story where uh, essentially monks in space, a kind of Umberto Eco-like story. Um, but this was dropped. This was felt that this was too much of a departure. Also, the wooden planet element didn't really lend itself to sci-fi. It was a bit more kind of fantastical for the Aliens universe. So the story was passed on to David Tuohy, which had a prison ship uh, in space, which was uh, knocked out of our orbit by a asteroid storm. The script was dropped because they just felt that it was very action heavy and it was a repeat of Aliens and he later went on and used that for Pitch Black. Now, Vincent Ward's script was then bastardized onto Tui's script and essentially what you got was a religious prison mining colony. Um, Fincher was hired as director and he was essentially uh, brought on because Fox thought this is a young guy. We we can control him. We can we can tell him what to do. This wasn't the case. Fincher was actually a very clever, independent director and wasn't taking any shit from uh, anyone. Alas, the pressure just got too too kind of hectic and hard for him. He walked off set before the movie was completed. Now, given that it had changed hands, that it was finished without a director, that the scripts were written the day the shooting was done. It's still a good movie. It's it's not a perfect movie. The acting is fantastic. The camera work is fantastic. Um, the color palette. Uh, an artist friend of mine, Aga, she she loves the look and aesthetic of the movie. And and this girl has a good eye for art. The 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 movie is 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 amazing. The music, Elliot Goldsmith music. Is haunting. He 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 brings a very somber, very religious kind of tone to the movie. Now, aspects that people didn't like that I shared their view with. Killing Hicks and Newt. That that was hurtful for people who had invested in this kind of pseudo family from Aliens. That 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 Ripley and Hicks got together and they kind of adopted. Um, Newt as their surrogate daughter and even their death was very unceremonious they, they were dead 10 minutes less than 10 minutes into the movie both characters were killed in a, a rather grisly fashion as well um that hurt people another thing that bothered people was there's one alien now sure the the first movie only had one alien but the first movie was essentially a haunted house it was a very claustrophobic very tight very kind of very oh, trapped kind of feeling to the movie you had nowhere to go you were trapped on a ship now while the prison planet is a very spooky place 
it lacks that tone of alien those elements of of um kind of the claustrophobia now another aspect people give out about was how come this isn't the action movie that we were waiting for how come it's not like aliens i disagree i think it's better that you do something different than just do a rehash alien is a very different movie from aliens and this is a very different movie from aliens now one could easily say that this is just a kind of bad knockoff of Aliens. I don't think so. It is a very stylish, very apocalyptic... There's a feeling of doom and dread hanging over this entire movie. Now, while there was horror in Alien and action in Aliens, this this was a very nihilistic kind of... It's not going to work out well for anyone kind of feel to it. And it works. It works really, really well. The cast is fantastic. Sigourney Weaver in this movie she hammers home the point that she's Ripley. She's she has kind of had the character who's been put through the ringer. She doesn't know what she wants to do. She doesn't know if the choices she made in life were right and why does she keep on ending up in this situation. There's a kind of sense of nihilism to the whole scenario. And and you can understand she's now trapped on a planet with rapists and murderers and it's like how can my life get even more fucked up than it already has? And and that, that resonates through the character. Charles S. Dutton. I am amazed this man hasn't gone on to bigger and better things. He's a fantastic actor in this movie. He he is has a commanding presence. He's kind of the preacher and the leader of the prisoners. He has a very strong resolve and he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't take no for an answer when Ripley's like when Ripley kinda wants to back out of trying to stop the alien or tries to kind of take an easy way out because of a certain element which I won't tell you about it in the movie he's like no fuck that I'm I am i do not beg for no one I don't back down we're, we're gonna fight this thing um Charles Dance who you might know from Game of Thrones uh he's fantastic he he kind of plays a, a doctor the prison doctor who's also a love interest for Ripley and he has a very tragic kind of backstory and Ripley kind of empathizes him with him. The sad thing is that character just kind of he's I feel he's wasted in a way because he disappears very quickly into the movie. Um, who else? Paul McGann. Paul McGann does a fantastic role. Paul McGann was uh, the doctor in the Doctor Who movie. He plays uh, an unhinged prisoner by the name of Golic. Now, in the extended edition, and it's an extended edition, it's not a director's cut. Fincher will have nothing to do with it. Um, his character disappears, but in the extended edition, it explains more about him, what he's about, and why this character was pinnacle to Alien 3. And he disappears in a regular version, but in the extended version, he plays a bigger pivotal role. Um, that's another thing. The theatrical version was like a half an hour shorter, and it's totally undermines the movie the extended edition is perfect it gives more layers to the characters it gives more layers to their plight and it kind of shows that like you know Ripley has a handle on this but another thing comes out of left field and she kind of has to question well what do we do with a certain element we have captured or trapped um I think that Alien 3, while not a perfect movie, is far from a bad movie. It is a movie that by all intents and purposes shouldn't exist, but does. And it it's, it's worth a look. It's definitely worth a look if you get a chance. Um, Fox at the time really, really, really pushed kind of the, the media, kind of the franchise media wagon to kind of promote this movie. It released a lot of video games. It, I have two. I have for I have for the Game Boy Alien 3. This is an isomorphic kind of shooter, but there's also RPG elements. It's very like Resident Evil. You gotta collect parts for machines, and um, it it's a cool little game. If you get a chance, if you probably find it cheap online, check it out. Now, this one, this Super Nintendo version of Alien 3, um, it is uh, very like uh, Metroid. Uh, essentially you go around the prison facility and kill aliens now with both games 
that element I just said, you go around a prison facility and kill aliens. These games had guns, they gave you guns and you were fighting more than one alien. So, essentially, I think develop, game developers and Fox kind of took a bit of a, a creative license with the movie and kind of turned it more into an aliens s game than an alien tree game. Now, another thing is, um, a lot of the comics, they, uh, they had, up until a certain point, done a lot of stories about, like, marines that were very reminiscent of the Aliens movies. But when Tree came out, there was a kind of push to get the kind of religious kind of feeling in, 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 in the comics. And you get a really cool comic, Alien Salvation, by Dave Gibbons and Mike Magnola. And this has a very cool kind of religious connotation to it that, that works really well. Um, if you get a chance, check it out. It's a beautiful book. I got a hardback edition and it's it's an awesome book. Um, one of my favourites. I have another favourite Aliens comic, which uh, is Aliens Labyrinth. It's like if Aliens was done by David Cronenberg. Very visceral comic. Uh, it's done by Jim Woodring and Killian Plunkett. Fantastic Irish artist. His uh, art is immensely detailed. I don't know if I got Get a, a nice kind of detailed panel here for you now. Yeah, check this out. It's it's a beautiful comic. And uh, if you get a chance, check it out. These two books, start, they deviate from the other Aliens comics, which are all about a bunch of Marines kind of going to a planet or stealing something or kind of Will and Jutani get involved. These comics are just, they're more psychological horrors than they are action. So they're more in line with the likes of Alien Tree. So... Alien Tree. My view, a very, very, very unfairly treated movie. Um, if you're a fan of Alien and Aliens and you want to stop there, that's cool. By all means do. But don't brush it off. It It's definitely a worthy addition. And it's, it's where the franchise should have stopped. Resurrection, the fourth movie, that was... That was a hot mess of a film. Uh, I probably will review it. I won't be giving it a good review. But I will go through the, the pros and cons of the movie. There's a lot more cons. But Alien 3, I do think, gets a really bad doing. So, um, if you get a chance, check it out. Check out the extended edition. Don't bother with the theatrical version. Because it, Alien 3, it's, it's a good watch. So, my name's Martin. This has been the Trash Picture Show. Leave a comment, leave any suggestions on what you want to see next. Uh, like, subscribe and uh, have a good one. Take care.